Hello, my name is Danny Yuxing Huang, an assistant professor at New York University. In this presentation, I'm going to give you a quick overview on how we crowdsource the network traffic from thousands of real-world IoT devices around the world. Many smart home IoT devices present security and privacy threats to users. One key challenge in studying the security and privacy of these smart devices is scale. A typical method is for researchers to buy dozens of smart home devices, install them in the lab, manually interact with these devices, capture the network traffic, and try to identify any security and privacy threats. The problem is that this method is hard to scale up to hundreds or even thousands of different types of smart home devices. To study the security and privacy threats of real-world devices, we need to collect network traffic from smart home devices at scale. To this end, we decide to crowdsource network traffic from real smart home users. But how do we convince thousands or even hundreds of thousands of people to help us crowdsource this data? Well, we built a usable software tool that provides volunteers with insights on IoT security and privacy with one click. In return, we ask users for consent and collect their anonymized network traffic data. This tool that we built is called IoT Inspector. Anybody can visit iotinspector.org to download this tool. Once a user downloads and runs IoT Inspector on their Mac, Linux, or Windows machines, IoT Inspector shows a list of devices in the same network. Users can then look at various visualizations of the smart home devices, like in their traffic, like identifying tracking and advertising services, or checking if their devices are sending large volumes of data when the device is not being used. Note that users do not need additional hardware. IoT Inspector runs on their computers. And users don't even need to change their router settings. So how does IoT Inspector collect network traffic data? IoT Inspector works by using a technique known as ARP spoofing. Let's say a smart camera is connected to the wireless router. For IoT Inspector to capture the traffic, the traffic must be rerouted to IoT Inspector. And to reroute this traffic, IoT Inspector regularly sends an ARP message to the camera that says, Hello camera, I'm the wireless router. At the same time, IoT Inspector regularly sends an ARP message to the wireless router that says, Hello, router. I'm the camera. These ARP messages convince the camera that IoT Inspector is the router, and they convince the router that it is the camera. So now, all traffic between the camera and the wireless router goes through IoT Inspector. ARP spoofing allows IoT Inspector to collect traffic without having users reconfigure their gateways or resetting their smart devices or purchasing additional hardware. A few clicks and users can identify potential security and privacy problems on their smart home network. Since we deployed the tool in April 2019, we've attracted more than 5,500 users around the world, and they used the tool to inspect more than 55,000 devices. These numbers are still growing, as anybody can download the tool right now. Amongst the users are journalists from Washington Post and National Public Radio, and they used IoT Inspector to investigate privacy leaks on smart TVs. In doing so, we've built the largest known data set of smart home network traffic by academic researchers. This data reviews new insights on security and privacy threats on real-world devices in the wild. For example, there are many cases where encryption is not implemented or they're implemented incorrectly. Some 36% of devices communicate over plain text HTTP, including devices made by Amazon. For devices that use TLS, about 10% of these devices used outdated versions like SSL 3.0 and TLS 1.0, including devices made by Samsung. As a result, an on-path attacker could potentially conduct a man-in-the-middle attack on such devices. One example for privacy risks is smart TVs. We looked at 417 smart TVs in our data set and the registered domains that they contacted. About 22% of these domains belong to advertising and tracking services. In fact, 34% of smart TVs talk to Google advertising domains, and about 5% of smart TVs talk to advertising and tracking services owned by Comcast. 
We're currently collaborating with a number of institutions like University of Chicago and Carnegie Mellon University. Topics include IoT domain identification, building firewall for IoT devices, studying users' privacy perception, and conducting healthcare research. Please feel free to reach out to us if you're interested in doing research with this largest known data set of IoT traffic. For more information, visit iotinspector.org. Thank you.